Okay, it seems that we already started. <laughs> it was not foreseen. So we are seeing that many people are coming in in the chat. So welcome to everyone. Here, we are here at the beautiful city of Belgrade and uh, the sunshine is shining. And we are very happy that we are gathering here for a very special occasion, actually. We are officially launching the uh, RVM Roadmap Project, which is an inspiring initiative we are pulling together to make uh, a change for the profession of research management in Europe. So we have gathered forces with uh, our European, but also international partners. And our objective is to work all together. We want to make an impact and uh, contribute and strengthen the European research area and work together for better framework conditions in the research ecosystem. So officially, welcome. We are launching the RM Roadmap project coordinated by IRMA and funded by the European Commission Horizon Europe program. My name is Borana. Uh, I'm uh, leading the projects team at the IRMA and I'm happy to work with uh, such wonderful colleagues for the last three years. I would like, first of all, to welcome our partners here in the room. They have traveled all across Europe. We have also some local partners from uh, Belgrade who join us. So thank you for being here. And uh, I also take the opportunity to remind that we are organizing this uh, kickoff meeting back to back also with the launch event of the Best Prac Network. Uh, Maybe some of you already know, but I'm happy to repeat that officially since last year, BESPRAC is a thematic group within a IRMA. So we are happy to work together, make it a, a long and successful life for BESPRAC. Welcome to the IRMA family again. <laughs> um, so then, of course, I want to welcome very warmly our online participants who sneaked into the room without uh, expectations from our side, but uh, we are very happy to have you here and uh, we are expecting around 100 today, this morning, but our objective is to reach out to many more hundreds and thousands in the next years, and this is one of also core missions with the Roadmap project. Um, then uh, a few words regarding this broadcast, because we are in a very special uh, setup here and with uh, a clear objective from our side, we want to engage the research management community widely, and we want to co-create with you the future of the profession of research management. The project is an ambitious project. Then we have several speakers here today that will show us the way ahead, how we will uh, work towards achieving this uh, vision and this ambition. So from my side, that is it for the moment, I will immediately hand over to our uh, AIRMA chairwoman, Evelina Bramval. Evelina is also a research funding specialist at Lula University. And uh, she is also, of course, a certified research manager. Evelina, the floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen who are gathered here and of course online. Today is a happy day for Yarma and collaborating partners as we kick off the RM Roadmap project. Today is a historical moment for all collaborating partners as we all together will be able to achieve what we couldn't do alone and without the support from European Commission. The essence of this collaboration is to increase awareness of the profession, make it stronger, contribute to the capacity building for MAs, provide data for policy make, makers, and much more. This RM roadmap collaboration and collaboration with our, with our sister project, Cardia, will enable engagement of many RMAs and active involvement of national associations, the Leiden Group 
and beyond. If we look back a decade or so, research management and administration was on the minds of maybe a few European Commission people. And today, I want to thank European Commission for recognizing the importance of our profession and giving support not only through the funding instrument, but also through the ERA Policy Agenda Action 17. RMA community clearly understands the need to recognize and to strengthen our profession in all member states. Therefore, I hope and I call for support from all member states government. And finally, I want to say that RM roadmap, let's make a real impact for RMA community. Thank you. Thank you, Evelina. I will now hand over to Nick Lassen, uh, Irma's Managing Director. I think for many of you, he does not need an introduction, but for uh, this uh, uh, occasion, I want to remind that Nick is uh, leading the RM Roadmap Project, and I'm very honored to co-coordinate with him. He will often say to you that he's a research manager at heart, so I let Nick continue the presentation. Thank you, Borana. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm a big fan of the approach of the book Start With Why by Simon Sinek. So I'll start with why as well today. Why are we here? We are here to help each other, help people, help people, help people, help people. We are here to help each other as a consortium, help research managers, help researchers, to help innovators and policymakers, help citizens. The European Commission has given us an amazing opportunity to show what research management can do for the RNI system, for the ERA, the European research area, and in the end for citizens. It is a three year, 1.5 million euro opportunity called RM Roadmap. There is strong momentum in research management and for good reason. More and more people understand the need for good research management. On the one hand, they see the untapped potential of the research management community. And on the other hand, the unreasonable burdens which growing complexity puts on the single researcher. At the Army, we have known the potential for decades and have worked bottom up at the European level. With ERA Action 17 and the Research Management Initiative, bottom up is ready to meet top down. We believe that that can constitute a game changer. We believe in that game changer. We believe there's huge potential for the research management community to advance the European research area and improve the RNI system. We know research management is also on the move in the US, in Japan, in South Africa. We must make sure Europe is also on the move in collaboration with these esteemed colleagues from across the world. The societal challenges facing us today are many. Therefore, we must focus to continuously improve our systems and, the efficiency and their efficiency and effectiveness. Research management can play a vital role in the RNI system if it is empowered and recognized. Therefore, we will work towards a game changer, a long-term game changer that focuses on long-term impact. Long-term game-changing impact requires a plan, determination, consistency, and support from all stakeholders. That plan will be our roadmap. A bit on the how now after the why. We want to do this in a big co-creation exercise. We will invite all those willing to contribute to take part and make their voices heard. We are counting on our good colleagues from the national level, national associations, networks, universities, research centers, and any research manager or person collaborating with research management. We will need your support to make this project a success. However, it's not just a project, as I said. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to co-create the future of all research managers in Europe. It's about a stronger and better RNI system. And in the end, it's about creating a better world together through research and innovation. Thank you. Okay, and with that, we go into a bit more 
the practical side, more um, information about uh, the project. Um, so I'm going to outline the project uh, for a moment. Um, and you see it's called RM Roadmap, and I was talking about it here. But uh, one of the questions I often get uh, from our community, and especially from the newer people, okay, you're talking about policies, research funding organizations, policy makers, how does that relate, system level and so on, but how can I help that? And the first answer to that is always be good at your job. Our job is to either support our researchers in the best way possible, or organizations in the best way possible, or whatever part of the system we are integrating with. Now, the state there is, that's not enough. That's indeed the first requirement, but we need to go further to be able to fully fulfill the potential I was talking about. And looking at the picture right now, it's a scattered picture. We have fantastic pockets of excellence, research administrators that have fantastic training, that are networked, that have divisions, that have uh, standard operating procedures and so on, to almost nothing. And almost nothing is inventing as you go along, putting more burden on the researchers. So how do we change that very diverse picture and how do we make it better? And we are coming from a place where we need to have a plan. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. And the plan we are trying to make is a roadmap and we want to make it with everybody because it can only work at the European level, member state per member state, research performing and funding organization one at a time if we have a plan and if we do it together. Now it's called RM roadmap, it's a plan and the, co the, um, uh, the subtitle is, as you see, creating framework conditions for research management to strengthen the European re research area. Because often um, projects go to an extent where, okay, this is what we can realize here within the project. And we definitely will realize a lot within the project, but we want to have a longer view. How we, can we make a game changer? How can we um, get to a place where the picture I described is better is more standardized, is better networked, and is better in the end to support the system and to support the researchers. That's why it's called framework conditions. We want to improve the framework conditions. We want to improve the career paths, the training, the awareness with policymakers, the engagement with policymakers, the engagement with, between research performing and research funding organization, because research managers can have a vital role there as an enabler, as, as the glue, as the grease to make this machine go faster in our supporting role. So it's a CSA, coordination and support action. It's not about research in research management. It's about the role of research. Well, up to a degree it is, but it is about how can we enable our community and how can we coordinate and support from our perspective that the system works better, that policy is supported. So as you see, it's a three year project uh, starting, uh, actually started officially uh, 1st of September. And I hope my clicker will do it. Okay, skip to the next one. Or I can, yeah. Okay, um, something about the objectives. What do we want to um, create here? As I said, we want to co-create. That's very important for us also as a European association. We're talking about supporting the, re the European research area. That's Europe, but that's especially the member states. How do the member states and um, how do the member states um, work together? And for our community, it's IARMA, but it's very much the national networks that we have, formal or informal, and uh, making them um, um, uh, take part in this and, and make their voices heard. So we want the bottom-up consensus of the future of research management. So how do we underpin this system? That's one of the key objectives. We also want to see. Okay, I said. It's a diverse picture, but there's a lot out there. There's already training. There's already networking opportunities, mobility opportunities, funding opportunities. What is there? We want to make that available to as many people um, as possible. Also, it will be crucial that we come to what is here on the right side to clarify our role, because we are, in a sense, a niche within a niche, which is often misunderstood. And we need to make it clear what our role is, what our role isn't, to be able to have a baseline uh, to move forward. A number of things there that we will definitely look at, among others, is effectiveness and efficiency, quality control, reducing administrative burdens for researchers, and trust and accountability. There's much more there, but this is what's very important for the system, also within the framework of um, um, accountability, the reproducibility crisis, and so on, trust in, in, in science. This is very important, and we have an important role there as well. 
Um, next to that also, if we dive deeper into a bottom-up consensus, what does that mean? Um, we don't have a full definition of what the profession is because it is so diverse. It has so many segmentations. What are those segmentations? What are the different themes, the different jobs within uh, research management and administration or research management? Even that is one of the key points. What's the definition? What's the term? Is it research management, research management and administrations? administration professionals on the interface of science and so on and so on. We have a number of definitions there. I covered quite a few of these also making clear what the role is. And also one of the key things I, I've said it already a couple of times, but um, Europe is Europe. Every country is different. Every ecosystem is different. We don't mean to impose something and say, this is the way you should do it. We mean to say, okay, this is the vision going forward. How do you link into that? How, what can we give you to improve your national system as well? Then looking at how we set this up. So if we want to do an exercise in this way, which is co-created, which is broad, which is Europe wide, then we need a lot of people to participate. So we started from networks. We started from, your, um, from IARMA, ASDP, BestPrac, Crowd Helix. So these are all network series, these are all communities. And we want to use those communities to drill down to a lot of collaborators. But looking, looking further at that, um, the consortium itself is a bit different because BestPrac is a part of Yarma at the point when we were um, um, submitting, actually it wasn't. So it is supported by a number of, um, um, it is supported by a number of organizations from the core group of BestPrac. Um, ASTP, Crowd Helix, and then also to um, uh, take into account, so ASTP, as you may know, is the um, uh, knowledge transfer um, um, uh, community. So you could say the innovation office equivalent of IARMA. Um, Una Europa, we have as associated partner and Johnson & Johnson, Janssen Pharmaceuticals. Una Europa is um, U European University Alliance. So we want that perspective to be, to be there as well. And we also want the business perspective um, to be in there. Um, Crowd Helix is also a fantastic network. It is um, next to that also an acceleration and impact acceleration and dissemination partner. Um, so a very good fit for us. RM roadmap here, quickly the work packages and talking about that work package one is about intelligence, is about where are we now, what are the career paths like, um, uh, what is the system like, the definitions uh, like, so it, it's, it's very much the baseline for the project. Two is training, networking, mobility, very much training what is there and how do we make it available. Three is bringing that, uh, those two and the co-creation exercise together into a roadmap. So what is the way forward? Work package four is about the community, is about the platform. So bringing communities together, putting them together on the system. Five is management and six is sustainability. So how do we take this network, network or this network of networks forward, this project forward um, after the project? Where should it go into what, um, uh, into what form uh, it will go best? So how will we do this? I already said it in a couple of times. It's in a large co-creation exercise. So we're going to create national communities on the system. Having said that, and that's the bottom thing, and that's crucial, crucial, crucial. We're not looking up to set structures next to structures that already exist. We want to engage with the national associations. We want to engage with the national networks. We want to engage with any player that can be of interest there. And because we are trying to create um, this co-creation exercise in a way um, that everybody can participate and make their voice heard. And we need the support of national networks um, to reinforce the exercise we're doing. So that's very much welcomed. I saw in this chat also that the Netherlands is uh, looking uh, towards potentially doing their own RM roadmap or their own roadmap, uh, which is very interesting. And actually we have already kind of created the opportunity. So we look forward uh, very much to working with the Netherlands, but all countries, um, of course, that, uh, that are ready and willing. Um, next to this also, you have the, um, the national community. So we want to get also intelligence on what is the state at the national level. But on the, on the other hand, also very much thematically, because the, one of the big pro problems or issues is the multidimensional nature of the profession. So you've, got, so you've got proposal writers, you've got data stewards, you've got people working with research infrastructures, projects managers, communication, legal, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. So we need to make sure 
um, that that is very well represented in the project and there will be different um, communities of practice there, you could say different thematic groups in a way. Now, how can you participate? One of the things is sign up to um, the portal, make your voice heard at the individual level. The second one you see there is become an ambassador. This is a big exercise. So we will need people to support this, to build these communities, to help us. We'll make an open call for people who will be the ambassador of either a country or one of these um, um, virtual centers of uh, practice, virtual, virtual communities of practice. And then also make those communities come alive. Look at the opportunities that you have there, work with them, engage your colleagues um, and, and be active. And then also, um, yeah, I really said that already, sign up to the national and thematic uh, communities. But this is how you can participate in what we find a unique opportunities that is fully aligned with what we want to be doing, our long-term goals. And I think that of the project and, and uh, on the one hand of the European Policy Action 17 at this moment is, is training, upskilling, recognition. So how do we move there? We have a chance now these next three years to really make a big leap in that. And I hope you will join us in that effort. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. A few words about the format. If you have questions, please keep them for later. You can post them in the Q&A session and we will take the questions at the end when we have finished with uh, all the presentations from our speakers. Uh, then, please, I would like to call Stine Delore. Uh, Stine Delore is policy officer at the European Commission, is leading the policy developments regarding the research management initiative in the European research area. And in addition to his current role, Steen has a long career as a researcher, research advisor, and head of international research unit. Steen, I hope you are there. I am. You can share your screen as well. Perfect, take it over. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, my congratulations to the consortium led by Ayarma for winning one of the uh, grants, one of the two grants uh, in the research management call we launched in uh, 2021. It's uh, very good that this uh, strong network, strong European level network uh, won this grant. It uh, will ensure a uh, high impact. And it's even more uh, interesting and, and very good to see that Best Track, ASTM and, and other partners uh, are joining in this, in this uh, consortium. Um, I uh, will explain a bit the broader policy context in my presentation. See that this should be better. Um, you missed, hopefully not the congratulations. So uh, I'm very glad to be in this uh, kickoff meeting. Um, I would like to sketch the broader policy context, um, remind you, because this is a kickoff meeting of a project, remind you on the expected outcome of the call um, and provide you with uh, some more information on upcoming funding opportunities for the research management community, at least at European level. So um, many of you, including the colleagues who have been uh, joining the meetings of best track in the past days have heard this story uh, before it may be new for some of you uh, i will briefly introduce you of what has happened in the past half a year a bit more regarding the uh, research management initiative where this project or i'm roadmap and also the sister project cardia fit in um, last year, the Council concluded, uh, together with the Commission, a pact for research innovation, laying out the uh, top priorities uh, to implement the European research area, actually to accelerate implementation. Um, the Council agreed on 20 actions within these four priorities and enhancing the strategic capacity of research performing organizations and research funding organizations is one of them. This is action 17. Now, in the past months, the uh, Council have 
and the Commission, together with stakeholder organizations, have um, agreed on a common understanding of the various activities within all these 20 actions. And uh, next week, on the 13th and 14th of September, the ERAC, which is this decision body of the ERA, uh, consisting of the Directors General of the Ministries, the National Ministries of Research and Science, um, will decide on which actions will go ahead, which activities among the actions will go ahead. Um, in July, Action 17 was not yet amongst the actions who got 50% 14 uh, member states behind it. So we are not sure yet uh, if the action can be implemented right away or if more uh, analysis is needed and it will be implemented then in a later stage. Um, things are moving and the number of member states who commit is increasing, but uh, we will hear next week. In any case, um, the action is, is there. And if member states do not commit, uh, if not a majority does not commit, it means the action will continue in a bit slower pace uh, at European level, but not in the member states, unfortunately. Um, what is the action? Mm. The good thing is that uh, since 2020, member states have uh, agreed that the uh, research management is an important priority for uh, the European research area, that it is necessary to uh, improve the capacity in research management as an essential part of the uh, strong European research innovation system. The action, Action 17, is there to stay. It is in the Council conclusions. Um, if it is committed to or not, uh, it is there to stay. And if it's not committed to, we are going to make a strong case together with the research management community so that it can start a bit later. Uh, in any case, it might still be committed to uh, by a majority of member states. We'll see next year. So the aim is clear. Um, it shares the aim with RM Roadmap and Cardea. Um, because in the Council conclusions of 2020 on the ERA, uh, it is called for this project. The aim of Action 17 uh, is covering uh, all the dimensions of research management. Uh, earlier this year, a group of nine experts have helped the Commission in defining the main challenges and the needs and also the objectives of this research management initiative. And EARMA was part of this, for which I thank you very much. Um, it, the experts have advised us that we should look at all the dimensions of research management. We should look at uh, perspectives starting from research policy over research project management and all the support activities related to uh, ethics, uh, knowledge valorization, uh, communication, data uh, analysis, and so on. All these perspectives are included. There are a lot of challenges encountered by the community. Um, and the experts included, well, uh, made kind of a ranking. So one of it is the uneven distribution of research management expertise and communities across the era something we can we can change together. There is a strong need for sustainable pan-European research management training. Smaller institutions often need support staff to combine a lot of roles, while in other bigger institutions, uh, discrete roles are, are um, managed by, by individuals, by many individuals in the research management. So smaller institutions, as well as the larger, require readily and democratic access to training and practice exchange in platforms, uh, networks, uh, and so on. Overall, uh, there is a lack of recognition of the profession of research managers as compared to other policy sectors in the research innovation. Um, and this is something uh, we, we want to do uh, something about. 
Now, the objective of the research management initiative can be summarized in five words, upskilling, recognition, networking, and capacity building. We intend to improve training and skills of research management staff. This will need to happen both at the policy level, where we include this skills and competences in the competence framework for researchers, because these are often overlapping, as well as at the level of uh, accessibility to training. A lot is available. Um, you have EOSC at European level, which is providing or will be providing a lot of training on, on uh, open science, on data management. This RI Train Plus, a European project training research infrastructure managers and operators. You have formation, you have past track, you have IARMA, Cardea. So all these efforts and many more need to be, in a way, tried to coordinate. Uh, the vision is that we have one platform, uh, doesn't matter where it is established, that provides all these training initiatives uh, for upskilling of research managers uh, and make it accessible in, in a very easy and, and democratic way to, to all early career research managers and all who need it. In recognition, is um, the goal is to contribute to, to professionalization without making certain degrees mandatory or without uh, pushing for certain standards in, in quality control for curricula but rather in an easy uh, bottom-up way, uh, making, especially making sure there is awareness, awareness creation on, amongst those who have the decisions, who make the decisions, like in the government, like in governance of institutions, make aware that research management profession is an essential tool for a successful institution, for a successful research program. Networking is the objective, uh, for this the objective is to support best practice exchange, which ARMA and best practice and, and uh, you colleagues are doing for many years. But this is unevenly distributed, this effort. Um, there are many research managers, early career research managers who do not have access to a network. So our goal is at, at the European Commission to make sure there are national networks established everywhere and that all research managers have access to the European or other international networks for best practice exchange, for help, advice, uh, to accelerate capacity. And that's the fourth objective, capacity building. Uh, we want to support less research innovation intense regions across the era. Uh, to, to get better capacity, uh, to, to get better access to training and upskilling. Um, for this, we will also launch a pilot um, this year already for a staff exchange uh, targeted to widening countries. I'll come back to this. So that's the picture. Um, we, we are starting a policy um, with, uh, with support of, of you the community. Um, I would like to thank you all uh, very much for your efforts in, in defining this policy. But, um, Nick's inspiring speech from this, speech from this morning, um, he said, bottom up is ready to meet top down. That's true and vice versa, but also the top down needs your input, needs the input from the research management community and from the member states. Uh, so uh, top-down will be designed together with, uh, in a bottom-up fashion, I would say. Um, so more to come in the coming weeks. Uh, we will, in any case, launch a task force. Uh, whether the action is supported to start immediately or a bit later, we will launch a task force to try to coordinate whatever is happening in the landscape, to try to get more details on the needs, the precise needs of the communities and community all over. Now, that's the policy, back to the project. Um, this is the call we launched uh, towards a European-wide training and networking scheme for research managers as, um, and it, it's a pilot call, 
it's uh, launching two projects, as Nick already told you. Um, and this is coming directly as an instruction from the council under the German presidency. German presidency and the German uh, government is really supportive for these uh, actions. Um, what is the action about? I want to remind you all um although it is already clear how uh, rm roadmap is structured and the goals and and the impact of it and cardeas as well so the 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 aim is that the fact that entities and regions who are proven strong in research and in innovation rely on a strong population of research managers and this we want to spread we want to expand this strength across the entire era. So this is also the policy goal. Huh? The objectives are to improve training and skills, to better, uh, to develop better RNI management capacity, um, to pave the way towards professionalization or better acknowledgement or recognition of the profession, and to contribute to set up a clear and diverse career path for research managers. So you see that the objectives of this goal uh, are running in parallel to the higher level objectives of the policy and era action 17. Would like to remind you of the expected outcome of this goal. This is important for both projects. We want better knowledge for policy making and both CARDEA and uh, RM Roadmap will be invited to join this task force that I mentioned before. You, we need your input. We want an increased awareness among all the research management staff across ERA about what is available in training, about the tools for networking, the mobility opportunities. So I explained to you the vision we have. Um, we are very happy that both CARDEA and uh, RM Roadmap explicitly have a dissemination strategy uh, in place. And we would be very happy to join forces with you, for instance, through your access. Increased capacity and compatibility uh, of cooperation throughout the era for research management is another expected outcome. Improved awareness of the drivers, the needs, the challenges uh, institutions have in, in, in terms of research management. We want to uh, establish a hub or several hubs that can help the EU research system with skills, um, upskilling for young or starting research managers. And finally, of course, this links also to the first objective is we need your recommendations uh, in terms of a career path for research managers at national and at the EU level. And as you know, uh, action four of the ERA policy agenda is about strengthening research careers. And there are strong links between action 17 and action four in this respect. I really call, I already called CARDEA and our own roadmap to collaborate, to uh, exploit your complementarities and avoid duplication. And I'm, I know this, this will work fine. I've seen uh, the partnership that is just growing. We need your recommendations for the research management initiative. We, we would like to invite you to come up, to get to us with regular updates of your project. And if possible, come together uh, with your advisors as one voice. Uh, also as one voice when you disseminate to stakeholders, uh, this, this is, will amplify the impact uh, of, of your efforts. Um, I would explicitly like to call your projects uh, to keep attention for less research innovation intensive regions and institutions. For every region in Europe that needs acceleration in research management capacity. Be inclusive in the type of roles of research managers. Uh, I refer to the multi dimensions. Um, uh, so do not only focus on uh, project managers, many more support uh, roles are, are needed and training is needed for these. Okay, in my last two slides, I would like to uh, focus uh, on, on the funding opportunities that we have in place. Um, so 
I'm, I refer to the Horizon Europe Wide Era uh, work program. Um, so already now, it, it's the, the first work program is, is closing almost. One of the last goals that we have is on era talents. It is a mobility action. Uh, it is not a training and mobility action like MSCA, but rather a coordination and support action that will allow for staff exchange in support of better careers, better training uh, of researchers, innovators, and other research innovation talents. It's explicitly open for research managers, research infrastructure operators, data stewards, knowledge brokers, and so on. It has a focus on widening countries and pays also for salaries. It includes a mandatory return if the sending institution is located in a widening country. So you can be sent elsewhere, but you have to come back. We explicitly allow also for experimentation in this call. Uh, so I'm sure many of you will be interested in, in setting up uh, a new program experiment uh, in support of research managers or other uh, RNI talents. The call closes this year. It's the first of its kind. And it will be fine-tuned in the coming years based on the outcome of, of and, and the type of applications that come in uh, now. Okay, um, for 23-24, the work program is in final stages of preparation. We expect to publish it or adopt it in uh, um, November. The program committee will have a final say still. Uh, I'm sure I, don't do, I do not need to remind you about the opportunities under twinning uh, that explicitly includes an expected outcome on uh, research management capacity. We have uh, acceleration services, uh, another call for um, in support of higher education institutions. This is counseling by experts like yourselves. Um, so institutions who are uh, intend to develop themselves or accelerate development in certain areas of the era, like knowledge valorization of open science or research uh, assessment reform, can rely on these projects and get an expert on board for a couple of weeks or months to help them develop a strategy, a roadmap, and implement it at the institution or in a, a group of institutions. So that's our acceleration services. The first call has been uh, ended and concluded in 22 this year. And we have three projects, three complementary projects that will be looking for experts. Okay, um, the excellence initiative is another call uh, that was concluded in 21. And it, uh, in 23, it will be calling for alliances of European, oh, sorry, of higher education institutions such as the European University uh, uh, alliances, but not exclusively. I'm sure many of you, perhaps even most of you, are are a member of or or, or li liaising with alliances. So this call will be funding, will be providing quite a substantial amount of funding uh, to alliances of higher education institutions with a focus on capacity building in widening countries. We will have an era talent call again, uh, providing the member states agree, and uh, as well as uh, another call or a new call on support measures for professionalization of research management, which can be about awareness creation at government, at institutions, uh, which can be about quality control of, of curricula and so on. Uh, this is totally open. So uh, a lot of things uh, in, in the making, and I'm looking forward very much to this project, the results, and to collaborating with you to define and design the policy in the coming year. Thank you and good luck. We will take questions for you later, but I just wanted also to quote you, you quote it, Nick, for the inspiration you provided this morning, if I can uh, somehow say it differently. I also would like uh, to highlight the importance of the top-down meeting the bottom-up, and it seems that it is ready and it needs the bottom-up. So thank you for that. We're also looking forward to uh, working together and contributing together for the European research area. So, um, 
Well, uh, we have uh, news from Ronald that he cannot make it this morning. Apparently, there is a taxi demonstration in Brussels. It happens. Uh, so I will then uh, hand over to uh, Isidoros Caracas. Dorian, you are looking forward to come. So now it is the moment for you. Uh, Isidoros Caracas is the head of the European Commission's Ethics and Research Integrity Sector. He's a biochemist by training and um, has set up the first system on ethics review of European research projects. He's actively advocating the ethics procedures and standards in EU Horizon framework to academic audiences and not only. Dorian, take it over. We'll Thank have you. a member Great. of our team who will uh, display the presentation for you. Great. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it seems uh, for me that I'm uh, basically uh, home. I feel uh, through the ethics and integrity that uh, EARMA is at least one of uh, the ethics homes that we have. So uh, my presentation will be based on the experience and the work that we have done uh, so far together uh, that might help uh, the implementation, parts of the implementation of uh, the new project. Uh, next slide. In ethics, we are in an integrity. Actually, I think we are in a unique position in uh, Horizon Europe, but also at the European level, because we are involved in uh, uh, three of the main uh, activities of uh, the European uh, Union research support. Uh, the first one is the policy. So we are part of uh, the ERA Pact, we are also part of the administration, management, and processes. Uh, so our knowledge, like you're trying to do at uh, the project, feed from policy into practice and from practice into policy. And the last pillar is that ethics and integrity, it's also part of the legal framework, meaning that we are part of the Horizon Europe regulation. So activities in ethics and integrity are part of the legislation and part of the contract that the European Commission uh, signs with the beneficiaries in order to disperse uh, European citizens money. Next slide, please. Within ERA, we, ethics and integrity, we claim that we are almost everywhere. Uh, I mean, from the 17, 20 actions that uh, Stein uh, produced uh, a little bit, uh, up, uh, let's go to the uh, previous slide. There you go. Uh, that uh, Stain uh, introduced. Uh, you will find ethics and integrity almost in all of them. Uh, and the member states, in order to make that as a stronger point, because if you are not seen, you might not exist, which is not true, uh, they added ethics and integrity as part of the ERA Pact. And I urge you to read the pact because it's extremely important also from a policy uh, perspective, but also from a communication perspective. That's how the European Union and the member states show to the citizens, but also to the outside world, where our values are and how, what do we do to support these values? So it's an extremely important text because it commits not only the union, but also the member states. Next one, please. Uh, Part and in addition to the ERA uh, Pact, uh, we have the Global Strategy of Research and Innovation and the core values and principles. Those are uh, Council Conclusions, which is an important policy uh, document, important policy documents uh, that highlight the general values, but also highlight the importance of ethics and research integrity. Next slide, please. Two of the basic legal documents that we use is the code of practice for uh, for conduct for research integrity and of course the regulation for horizon europe so apart from the process we are embedded also in the legal documents next slide if you have been a manager of uh, research you have seen this slide because this is the slide that describes what is the responsibility of the institutions that receive eu funding and this is basically the slide that started our close contact with uh, EARMA, 
in order to develop the best way forward to disseminate knowledge and to enhance the understanding and know-how at the local level, at the institutional level, in order to support researchers to be able to deal properly with uh, the ethics issues that are raised by their research. Next slide, please. What are the current challenges? Uh, those are challenges that um, refer to everybody, but also to uh, research managers, research funders, and research policy organizations. First of all, we all know that the support to researchers and research managers, it's quite diverse. Both Nick and Stain uh, discussed that. We need to improve and learn how to help researchers and research managers without spending enormous amount of funds. Our institutions are in different financial situations. We cannot expect a small institution to be able to spend the same amount as a large institution, but we can do that. We can do the necessary infrastructure work without spending too much work too much funds. And I think the ARMA project can help into devising this knowledge transfer and the know-how. For us in ethics, it is important to have the support to the ethics and integrity committees because these people mostly work voluntarily. They're an important part of the governance of ethics and research integrity. And like research managers, they need to be supported. And last but not least, we have uh, the Embassy of Good Science. This is built as a one-stop shop of ethics and integrity, education and training. It is available for everybody. And ARMA uh, has participated in this activity with the uh, specific working group that the ARMA has set up on ethics and integrity, which I think, I'm stand corrected, of course, is one of the first uh, working groups on a specialized topic that uh, spent time and effort to be able to transfer knowledge from the European Union to uh, the beneficiaries and, of course, the other way around too. Next slide, please. Uh, in order to help the research community, but also to help the research managers, because we always have that rainbow of interested parties within the calls that we design for research support. Uh, we have built a project that is nearing its end, which is called uh, operating standard operating procedures for uh, research uh, integrity that has developed a very good set of uh, tools and outcomes that can be used by research institutions when they are setting up their internal governance system for ethics and research integrity, but not only. In the picture, you probably recognize, this is an arbitrary picture, but by accident, you will recognize uh, two people that uh, you know uh, that have been participating, uh, representing ARMA in the um, standard operating projects uh, project. And next slide, please. Future challenges where everybody has to work in. Uh, one is artificial intelligence. This is an area that uh, we think we know a lot. Uh, quantum, which we know very little, if anything at all, and uh, organoid research in biomedicine, where I think we are, at least not as scientists, but as a research managers and as citizens, we are scared to know. These areas will require our uh, attention in the years to come, and they are what I call massively integrated technologies. Those are technologies that they will be by necessity and probably later on by law, putting together in close collaboration, researchers, managers, funders, policymakers, and citizens. It's the nature of these technologies that would bring together uh, all these stakeholders in order to collaborate for, for increasing the impact and making possible innovation and, uh, and uh, research results that are useful for society. The project of the ARMA comes at a very good time in order to be, I think, looking forward for the future,
to play an important role and a necessary role in helping the research community dealing with all the extra burdens that will come with the implementation of uh, new technologies. Those are just three technologies that I put on the slide. There are others, but the massive importance of this technology for economy and research uh, will become evident for AI, it is already evident uh, in the years to come. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Why we consider we meaning ethics and research integrity in, uh, the, in the GRTD? Why do we consider ARMA managers as viable partners for ethics and integrity? It has been discussed already by Nick and Stein, but I will have to repeat it because that comes straight from our experience in working with specifically the ARMA uh, Working Group on Ethics and Research Integrity. Well, it's a know-how area. That's where beneficiaries, researchers go or should go to get information about how to deal the best way with certain areas that are requirements, both by national law and European law. We should not forget that even without the European Union funding, it is important that most of the requirements that we put forward and that sometimes torture researchers are also requirement of most of our national legislations. So it's a go-to place. It's a place where researchers can go to find information. It's a place where researchers can go to find support, not necessarily answers. This is the researcher's responsibility, but they can find support in the governance of ethics and research integrity and how to deal, how to approach it, what is the best practice, and of course, it provides access to a big network, a big network. If I have not dealt with this issue in my institution, through the network that the ARMA and others have built, I can call someone to find out, how did you do that? The ARMA people, at least the ones that I met, are always willing to learn. It is part of their job. It is part of their responsibilities, which is increasing as we go along. But this opportunity and access to information is what makes research managers as such an important lo loci in the institutional structure. There is a cooperative culture. I witnessed that myself many times, uh, having participated in best practice uh, meetings where I saw this kind of real-time transfer of knowledge and uh, the real um, openness to collaboration. Of course, a helpful hand. The ARMA colleagues, research managers are always there to provide a helpful hand and to answer questions, to try to show the, the researchers how to deal with uh, important issues. Important multiplier. If one institution develops the knowledge, the research managers become automatically important multipliers for this information, this knowledge, this how know-how, to be distributed through the network to other institutions. And of course, for us, and keeping in mind the previous slide, the ARMA research managers network will help us a great deal in making the new language that we will need to deal with ethics and research integrity issues in emerging technologies, make that language known. We are developing that language. I do not have answers, but terms are shifting, uh, understandings are shifting, privacy in the quantum era. What does it mean? We don't know. Privacy in AI, we are still examining. What does it mean? How can ethics be a support to research instead of red tape, red tape? We have to develop new language that will be uh, distributed by the research managers' networks. Last but not least, very important for us, next slide, please. The feedback loops. Our system in the European Commission gets better only because we get information both from the researchers, but as importantly from the research managers. 
you, the research managers, tell us what works, what doesn't work, what needs improvement, and the direction of this improvement. So this feedback loop is something that is highly valued, appreciated, and needed. Next slide, please. And of course, I know that uh, this is easier said than done, but uh, uh, research ethics and integrity cost money. We are all for streamlining, leveraging, uh, working on economies of scale, but we have to reach a limit where less funding, less support will mean worse ethics, worse integrity. And as Europeans, we would like to avoid that at all costs. Thank you for your uh, welcoming uh, words and uh, I'm here for your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Dorian. So uh, please stay online. We'll take the questions in a few minutes. And uh, I also wanted to highlight that we have been collaborating a lot together for the ethics and research integrity for the IRMA thematic group on ethics and integrity. And you're right. It's uh, the first thematic group in IRMA now already four years operating. And uh, we want to replicate this success model also for the other groups, Open Science, Impact, University Alliances, and all the uh, groups that we also be forming with roadmap on uh, knowledge brokers, data stewards, financial managers, et cetera. So a lot is coming. Uh, you said yourself, um, ethics and integrity for Mayirma is VP. Maybe you want to say VIP, but <laughs> let's give it as an option for next time. <laughs> Thank you, Dorian. Uh, now, last but of course not least, uh, I would like to ask our uh, sister project coordinator, uh, Mary Kate O'Regan, that is uh, representing the Cardea project. Uh, Mary Kate is HR business manager at University College Cork. Uh, Mary is leading the HR excellence in research organizational change program for UCC and is co principal investigator for the Horizon Europe Cardea project. We are issued from the same call, almost same mother, you know, we might say it that way. And please, Mary, the floor is yours. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, thank you to Verana, um, to Nick, to Evangelina, and um, also thank you to Stein and Isadorus, I hope I'm saying that correctly, for your really interesting um, insights and information and sharing the knowledge that you have from within the gates of the European Commission. So uh, these are always very interesting to me. So um, good morning, everyone. And again, thank you so much for having me here today. It was really great to meet everybody and some of you I've met already. And I know that RM Roadmap and Cardea will work very well together. And we will not, I'm sure, be reinventing wheels and we need to collaborate to do the best job we can for research managers in the European research area. So um, I'm here to talk to you about Cardea. And um, oh yeah, I have a thing here, I guess. There it is. So I don't know what I did there, but anyway, um, Cardea stands for and is the ancient Roman goddess of the hinge and it stands for career acknowledgement for research managers delivering for the research area and what is really important to me are the two words acknowledgement because research managers are there right and delivering because we have proved time and time again that we can deliver far research. So that's super important to me. Let's see. Um, it's our partners come from uh, Greece, Belgium, Italy, Croatia, Poland, Romania, Spain, Catalonia, and um, so we are 
embracing the widening countries of Europe. And of course, UCC in Ireland are the coordinators, and that is where I come from. And um, so who are we? <laughs> who is Cardea? So we are a group, many of us are HR professionals, with a proven track record in the delivery of initiatives to support research staff within our own organizations and universities. And under the framework provided by the HR Excellence in Research Initi Initiative, we work to improve policy and practice, recruitment, working conditions, and the training and development of research staff. In fact, it is through the delivery of UCC's research training to research staff that Joanne and I became uh, professional uh, friends and colleagues. So really, this award is an acknowledgement of the continued progress of HR excellence in research in UCC and our partner organizations um, under HR excellence in research. Um, our partners met on the highways and byways of Europe. So we all knew one another before we put in our proposal, which for us was really, really important. Um, so the communication channels and professional connections were already there. And when you bring your access into this equation, then we as a group are utilizing two very well established policy pathways within the ERA. So, We work and we will work and continue to work to leverage our experience and to scale up our activities and ideas from the national and organizational level to the European level. We will work to connect in with the Pact for Research under Action 17 that Stein has already mentioned and at the national level. And by doing so, we will foster future dialogue by continuing to share our best practice and facilitating collaboration and coordination on common research and innovation objectives. Our project and also RM Roadmap creates a synergy between the European research area and the European education area and also DG employment, which is a thought that came to me via um, uh, a professional uh, friend the other day that I never even thought of, right? We will do, do this through adult learning, skills, qualifications, and by working to provide information on skills needs across countries and sectors within the, the area of research manager roles. So really, as a group, we were like surfers out there on Horizon Europe, waiting for the call. And when the call came, we grabbed our boards and we surfed that wave to success, okay? So what are the challenges? You can see there the invisible person, right? Research manager roles are invisible from a policy perspective, career development perspective, and career progression perspective throughout Europe. There is no consistency in salary, skills, competencies, and training across the European research area. Our Cardea's priority deliverables connecting in with RM Roadmap, right? Start with recognition and acknowledgement of the research manager role as a valued career choice. The classification 
of research manager roles, the knowledge, skills, and competencies required for the role will be a big part of Cardea, providing training and development initiatives combined with the non nine hub are going to be serious deliverables for us in Cardia. Um, our deliverables also include, and Stein mentioned it, um, the contribution to policy, lobbying and engagement with our various uh, stakeholders. And just to say that we have launched a survey um, on all things research management, our FAR research managers in the European research area. And um, my co-PI Joanne just told me that we have 231 responses already. We're looking for 500, but we are over 50%. We will take more than 500, okay? But we wanted a really good base hitting as many countries in the European research area as we could. Okay, so, so how does our project help a research manager sitting in an office in a widening country? And that is the question that I always ask myself when I'm thinking about this project, right? Cardia and RM Roadmap will do this through access to better information, training, career development initiatives, networking, mobility, and an improved awareness of EU policy drivers and EU policy itself. So I currently run a program. It's called the Odyssey Program. And it, I designed it to enable final year PhD students and researchers to progress to rewarding careers beyond academia. So there is a quote from one of the participants and it's actually a nice, a nice quote. I'm not going to even read it all, but what really strikes me about that quote is, I look forward to what the future holds for me. So this is a person who was doing a PhD, came along to the Odyssey program, hadn't a clue what they wanted to do, was thinking, I'm going to have to stay in academia. I really want to be a professor. And this program came along at the right time in this person's life. And that is the type of feedback that I am hoping to get from the work in Cardia, that if I can help one person, obviously I want to help more than one person, but if we can get that type of feedback um, from research managers, um, I will be very, very pleased. So thank you for the opportunity to present today. And I will just leave you with a quote, right? From Seneca the Elder, every new beginning comes from other beginnings ends right and here we are beginning and my every best wish for the success for rm roadmap and our continuous collaboration so thank you very much thank you very much mary kate beautiful quote uh, we will now open the questions from the audience so if my colleague teresa could display them on the screen Please, if you have other questions, put them uh, in the Q&A. So we have a question from uh, Pier Antonios. Greetings, how will the sign up to national and thematic communities be made available? Where will we find the modality to do that? So maybe this is a question for Nick. Okay. 
the exact exact details uh, we will see but uh, it will be brought to you in man many different ways um, um it's but the main channel and the way we've set it up is to work through networks of course we're working through the networks that are partners here but national associations of research managers of knowledge transfer uh, professionals um, and all the networks that we have uh, obviously there will be a website there will be a newsletter and so on and so on um, but um, there you will learn about it. Um, then when you get the information, you will be logging into a system, signing up. And once you're in that system, um, you will be sure to get uh, all of the information on the project. On the one hand, um, how to um, engage. And on the other hand, uh, what's coming out of the project as well. Uh, we also want it to be more than that and to be a community so that the um, there will be these national and thematic discussions going on outside of, well, really from the bottom up, outside of what is asked by the consortium. Okay, I hope that answers Pierre Antonius's question. Okay, yeah. Um, there, is a, there is one question regarding the Cardia survey, and I think someone posted in the chat the link to the survey. So uh, please go and uh, look the link in the chat. Uh, another question from Ines uh, for the Cardia project Is there any way? to sign up to a newsletter or be updated on the project and where can we participate in the survey that Mary talked about. Mary, please. Hello, thank you for your interest in the Cardia project uh, survey. Certainly, um, if you go to the ERA, uh, website. Um, it's there. It's also under my LinkedIn profile. Sorry, this is, I don't mean to sound like this, but it's under my LinkedIn profile, which is Mary O'Regan at University College Cork. And also it is on the Cardia interim website, which is under University College Cork as well. So if you Google University College Cork, Cardia, you should find the link there. So um, anyway, uh, also somebody has just put it into the chat. So hopefully you will be, please, as many research managers, please answer it. And um, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. Are there any other questions for the speakers of the, mo of the morning, for Stain, Dorian, for Nick, Evelina? It seems not. So I think you have been also chatting a lot. I see messages coming in and out and numbers increasing in hundreds. So great. This is uh, the opportunity for you to also interact. It's amazing. Look at it. <laughs> okay. And also the countries, Belgium, Albania, Malta, Oslo. It is really, really fantastic. Um, Maybe uh, I will hand over to Nick now. He will uh, add a few words. Oriana? Yes. I'm sorry, I saw a question in the previous chats. Can I come back to oh, that? Oh, please, stay in. Yes. Uh, it's a question from uh, Benjamin Martinez. Thank you very much. Can you confirm that even if Action 17 doesn't get enough support from member states, the planned activities under this action will still be implemented. I cannot confirm uh, the ERAC uh, will decide next week what will happen with actions that do not get sufficient commitment in case that happens for action 17. What I can confirm is that we will, of course, continue the project and that the uh, activities that we have planned in the work program will likely continue. Uh, I can also confirm that we intend to continue the task force for further analysis and recommendations to uh, the policy, to the ERA forum uh, in ne next year. But what will not happen is uh, deployment of activities at national level, if the action is not committed to, or any other new activities that the member states would ask us to uh, arrange at European level. What will also be more difficult is to secure budget in the future after the next work program for the research management uh, initiative. 
because the funding in wide area is very limited and priorities are being made and those actions are supported that uh, are on the list. So it's a mixture. So I cross my fingers that uh, sufficient, a sufficient high number of member states actually support the action so that we can really kick off uh, as it should uh, and not have some slower uh, pace. Thank you. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. Should there be more questions, use the Q&A facility. Um, that's different than the chat. Um, look at the bottom there. Um, I want to um, end, I'm waiting for a few questions still, but I want to end by thanking the Cost Association. Um, we had uh, Director Ronald de Bruyne uh, ready to speak to us, but unfortunately, due to circumstances, he couldn't speak today. But the Cost Association had, um, about 10 years ago, already the vision to start investing in research management, to start investing in colleagues networking with priorities towards early stage uh, research administrators and towards widening countries. I think the thought leadership or the early action there uh, by cost has been extremely valuable and is also at the basis of the collaboration uh, between IARMA, BestPrac, and in the end also this in this project leading into, I think what the cost uh, um, association is trying to do, leading into um, better networking working across Europe, but also a better future, future for the RNI system. So thank you very much, uh, Cost Association, uh, for, for that vision and for engaging with the relevant stakeholders. I... There, there, we will take uh, one last question. Uh, in the chat, uh, someone asked about the Widera calls, if you could give more info on existing consortia. I guess this question is for Stain. Or you could maybe take it? Yes. The answer to that is no. <laughs> I don't, that's um, a con a existing consortia. Um, do you mean the, the projects that have been formed already? Um, participant or consisting, do you mean projects? That have been funded? So this is probably public information. Um, yes, if it is for future consortia for calls, no. If it is for existing project at the moment, they will all be made uh, part of the public record. So I think we can can help out with directing you in the general direction, but uh, they are all uh, all published and they will all have uh, websites uh, as well. Okay, do we then, uh, Theresia, do we have all, we're all done, looks like, yeah. Okay, super. Then I'll leave it to Borana to moderate the very end. Okay, so here we are, one hour and a half together. But this is only the start, actually, of uh, working together. So we are all very enthusiastic. We are all very committed and we want to work with you, with a very vibrant already research management community. But we also want to work with policymakers, we want to work with all uh, other European stakeholders, with national funders, and uh, with all the actors that to work together towards a better research environment and a more professional research environment. Finally, I would like to thank all our partners here in the room. So we will continue actually our meeting with our first General Assembly here today. I would like to thank all our technicians here in the room who made it possible to have this hybrid meeting, which you saw that it comes also with technical details, but that is part of life. So we managed and we uh, had a very interesting session this morning. I would like also to help my colleagues who managed the chat, who moderated the chat and have been inviting you to the Zoom leaking. Everything is smooth. And uh, I would like to thank also the speakers of this morning for uh, providing inspirations for the way ahead. And of course, thank you to all of you online, to those of you who will be watching us in the future, and those who will come and will collaborate with us for the RM Roadmap project. We are all looking very much forward to it. <laughs>